Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Antonio Peña. I'm the manager of the Axelcom Group, and this is my colleague Alvaro Garcia, established researcher in my group. We're talking today about HOMI, enabling private deep learning, an ERC consolidator grant. Hello, uh, everyone. So today I want to talk to you about deep learning. So deep learning uses very large neural networks in a process called inference, and of course is revolutionizing many of the things that we know today as uh, smart homes, uh, voice recognition, computer vision, and is a great revolution. But of course, we need privacy. And wouldn't it be great if we could run those large models and large networks in the untrusted cloud, and at the same time protect from the prying eyes of the central authority that hold this sensitive data of yours, actually, and all of that com complying with the current regulation that you should all be aware in Europe, GDPR. Therefore, I want to introduce a technique called homomorphic encryption. Before homomorphic encryption, we had this. Your data, your models, the inference computation, all is unprotected, and still you can get predictions, of course, but a much better approach will be protecting your user data, your models, and your inference process, and obtain your results and decrypt them with your private key. So we compute over encrypted data, and we obtain results without having to reveal to the untrusted storage in the cloud all our sensitive information, right? So this, of course, has some limitations. Homomorphic encryption has some limitations by itself, and this is because the data size increases a lot when we encrypt, and therefore the computational speed up suffers or can suffer. But there are some solutions for that, and the, the main idea here is that we could fit those things in RAM and speed up. Tony will tell you about it. So we aim at enabling the efficient execution of uh, current impossible scenarios of homomorphic encrypted deep learning inference. One is large models. As uh, Alvaro mentioned, only small-sized, uh, mobile-sized models fit within current RAM spaces. Two, multiple smaller models running concurrently, as in the case of a cloud service attending multiple clients. And three, there are many use cases that benefit from the added accuracy of larger inputs, as for example, cancer detection using high resolution images. This uh, scenario indeed will be studied in combination with the two others. And while the community is uh, focused on reducing um, data size overhead and compute intensity to adapt to traditional hardware, we will undertake a complementary and unique direction from a high performance computing perspective to enable state-of-the-art data set sizes and compute loads. And we intend to do this by leveraging large spaces offered by recently emerged persistent memory technology and also upcoming CXL. These large spaces, however, uh, come at a price of severe limitations, which is where the big challenges lie. Compared to traditional DRAM, these uh, technologies offer much larger latencies, lower bandwidths, uh, more restricted friendly access patterns, and also restricted or unfriendly uh, cache replacement policies when the DRAM acts as a cache for the persistent memory space. However, we do have evidence that the access patterns generated during homomorphically encrypted deep learning inference can be friendly for this technology. As for the implementation of the methodology, we, will, we intend to explore optimizations on current technology. We have already identified some sources of inefficiency in current frameworks. We will develop uh, specific optimizations targeting heterogeneous memory systems, and we will make extensive use of accelerators, including GPUs and FPGAs. On the hardware side, we, we will develop simulation infrastructure to explore features such as very wide uh, vector units, we will also explore processing in memory, and we will finally intend to design a domain-specific accelerator leveraging all of our successful ideas. This will, of course, be performed in a strong co-design approach. This goes uh, slower than my, <laughs> my brain. Uh, and now some 
personal tricks and tips, uh, tips and tricks from myself. This is just my own vision of on ERC is to try to promote them and encourage you. So these ERC grants are among the most prestigious uh, funding schemes in academia. And uh, their expectations are actually full of contradictions. You need a breakthrough and you, you need to show the urgency for that breakthrough. These are purely academic proposals. Industrial benefits are okay, but these are a side effect. And this is not the way we used to think about our proposals in, in, in BSc. It's tough even for me to, to make this change. We, you do need a solid CV. You need to fill in your gaps early enough. But you do not need to be a superstar, actually. You need at least some kind of leading, invited talks, awards. Uh, it cannot be a continuation of your research, but at the same time, you have to prove that you are the best suited in the world to undergo the, this research. This has to be high risk and high gain, but the high risk has to be kind of uh, contained, only partial. And uh, there are statistically higher chances for, uh, for successful, uh, for uh, proposal resubmissions and also former Marie Curie individual fellows. And uh, with this, if it wants to go to the next slide. Yes, with this last automated slide, we thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>